Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to a bit more KSP, a little bit more Kerbal. Now, we're in a situation where we're sort of, we were chipping away at potentially doing this contract. We put all of it on the back burner for a little bit because we're down to about 30K in the bank. You can see down there, not a lot. Now, I was just uh, thinking to myself here when I was loading in, these boosters, 200 bucks, 400 bucks, liquid fuel, 1100. Now, the finesse of a liquid fuel engine is needed for things like orbit, 100%. But for this, the cost is ridiculous. Um, and that's what's hurting us as well. If I take that out, I can take a huge chunk of the costing out. I wonder how much the fuel tanks cost as well. 150, look at that. The fuel tanks are as much as a booster for the most part anyway. So we're going to go on to test series two. And we're going to sort of start trying to be a bit more cost effective here because the whole name of the game is we're doing the jobs for money. And if it's going to cost us a shitload of money just to do them, like what are, what are we even doing, you know? So we need to have the RT hammer. And did I end up emptying it of fuel? I did. Okay, well, we're going to fill it back up. It does cost money, but we're going to see if we can u actually use it. Like, it's already on the ship as it is, so we might as well apply it, right? So I'm, I'm going to delete this. And here we have, <coughs> excuse me, basically our little pod, and we've got our little uh, test rocket. Uh, now, I know that we've got this. I keep coming back to it. It's definitely cheaper, and it doesn't have... It's got monopropellant. How much does this weigh is a question. Actually, mass, 0 0.05 tons, 0.8 tons. Wow, that weighs a lot more. Now, I think the big disadvantage of using a probe like this is that it doesn't actually have SAS or SAS or whatever you'd like to call it. But I think, I think we, you know what? I might actually try, try this with a probe. Potentially. How, how do we go recovering a probe? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, it'd be it'd be cheaper. It'd be half the price. Uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's try an unmanned flight. Oh my god! What have I done here? All oh, right. Okay. Okay. So you sort of have to start. It sort of counts as like a sort of an anchor, right? I'm gonna give the probe a go. Um. We're going to put the the hammer on the bottom of it. Oh, this is interesting, isn't it? This is definitely interesting. Have the hammer. All right. Okay, that's cool. Flying. And how much does that cost? 850. But it's not messing around. Just thump thump away. All right, we're going to go test series 2P. We'll call it something like that, right? The probe or we could, let's call it Test Series P, the Probe Series. Look at this ugly monstrosity. Now I'm gonna have to probably manually steer it to keep it straight, which uh, won't be that bad, I suppose. It's not like we're trying to angle or anything like that. And um, how much does that cost? 1500 bucks, okay, yeah, sure. We could potentially put like a throttle or something like that, but having that fire and putting this juice on there is probably a good sort of start. Um, I'm actually just going to do it like this. You know I love iterative testing. That's sort of what makes my brain tick. Now, we will have to stage. But the more that I can... The more stuff, that, equipment that I can save for recovery, the better, right? Well, hang on, hang on. Here's a thought. Is there a scenario where I can keep rockets attached? You know, we're trying to be cost effective here. Can I put a parachute on that? What about radial parachute? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, I guess it's a probe series. I'm not that, that worried. I'm going to put a single parachute on that. Yeah, the drag chutes are cool, but you know what? I'm going to put one on this booster as well. 
Now, you can do stuff with this as well. Minimum pressure. I'm trying to remember how this works. Minimum pressure. Altitude. Let's put... Let's put 3,000. I'm trying to remember if it will stage... If it's that or the altitude that makes it stage on its own sort of thing, right? Or like this, this, this minimum pressure. 0.75? Oh, I don't know. Let's put it in the middle. Let's put all that. You know what? We'll just start eyeballing the bars. Like, right? That's kind of the middle. That'll do. Okay. Um. Jesus, we'll even do it with this and see what happens. Right? Cool. So, that's going to go... We, we're going to need a decoupler in here. How much do decouplers cost anyway? 200 bucks, Jesus Christ. The only other thing is, like, try and keep it all as one big thing. But you know what? No, I'll just try and recover the stages. That's fine. So, boom. That's going to decouple... And, geez, I don't know, maybe, why is there an asterisk on you? Is it because I've got you selected? I don't understand. Well, let's put it in that stage anyway. It's not like we're risking any Kerbal lives. We'll put that in that stage too. So it's going to decouple, it's going to shoot, and then that's going to fire as well. Well, actually, you know what? I'll put this in its own, in its own stage. Because we'll give it a chance to, you know, to duck away so we don't blow it up. Right? And how much is my probe going to cost? Two and a half thousand bucks. Okay, well, after all that. But we're, we're making, we're trying to make it like almost 100% recoverable, apart from obviously the fuel costs. Okay, that's cool. I like that. We're going to give this a go. Because I've ignored being cost effective this whole time. To my f folly, to my detriment. And um, I guess you know you gotta you gotta live and learn by these sort of things. Okay, cool. So we've got no SAS, or I mean I can try and do it. No SAS, no pilots cannot engage SAS. That's fine. All right, let's uh let's give it a go and see what happens. We'll, I'll pull up the contract. Oh, I can't steer it at all. Is that what's going on here? That's interesting. I thought that at least I would have some control. Okay. Why is that red? Oh, we're going to need to stage that. Fall away. Fall away! Nah, that rocket's still gonna go. Oh! Did its parachute go on its own? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! Oh no, don't look at the screen, I can't. Oh my god, please don't crash my computer or something. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, has that parachute worked in the background? It looks like it has. It has! Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Look at that. Oh my god, it is twirling quite a bit. Oh, that's good. That's nice. Let's see how much recovers. See, like, if it lands in the ocean like this, is it going to be recoverable or is it going to be going to explode? Like, it has a significant uh, rotational acceleration. Which we could probably offset with the uh, shoots on either side. It is slowing. How's that going over there? A 
That's nice. That's nice that I can recover my things. But Jesus, it didn't want to go straight. So we're probably going to have to... Uh, I suppose we put fins on it, right? I that Like, not having sass, I can understand that, but not having the capacity to even steer. Yeah, it looks like it's still intact over there. I can see it. Yeah, I didn't realize it was actually fire and forget sort of thing. Okay. I, I'll be curious what the sort of recovery cost is after the, you know, the burn that we'd done. Hey, look at that. Nice. All right. Recovery of vehicle. 800 bucks in recovered parts. Stay put, Nick. Hammer. Radial shoot. It hasn't recovered the other thing. Now, this is something I've been curious about. Okay, look, here we go. Fly, recover. Alright, well, it flashed up for a, a split second, but it didn't tell... Right, so if I want to recover parts, how do... That's how I have to do it. I have to... It has to be an eye shot still. Oh, this is all very confusing. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, look. The, the P-Series was interesting, but we might shelve it, if only because I want the ability to steer. What are these blokes all doing in a line? Okay. So we're going to go back to the test series god why can't you do it by date please test series one right except we're going to remove the liquid the liquid component we're going to refill this hammer we're going to do something very similar here. I think I think I will put the thumper on it. However, we will decouple it. Like so. We've got our chutes. Stage one. Decouple. No. Oh, I did. I remember doing that. Okay, cool. Stage two, decouple. Stage three. I will keep all the decoupling in that separate just because at the moment we might be going like a bazillion miles an hour and that doesn't help anyone if I just continue to thrust into it. Like I, I need to... I don't really have a throttle other than being able to pause between stages and that's how I will throttle my acceleration essentially. Okay, cool. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, let's save that and let's give that a bloody red hot go, shall we? There it is there. Okay. There's not much we can do about it because it's all just booster stuff, but we can sort of try and zero it. Yeah. It's interesting. Delta V. Start mass, in mass. And then we had this. This was helpful for the apoapsis. Orbit. I can't change that. What's advanced orbital? Oh. Because, yeah, I, I've, I kind of wish there was more telemetry rather than this guesswork. But, and there probably is, I just don't know, I just don't know where it is, you know? Solid fuel? Okay. Oh, what's this? Messages? No, 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 no. Start mass, end mass. Where are you putting that number? I can't see. Okay. Anyway, we'll get the contract up. That's the main thing that we want. Oh, look at this. We just need to splash down with that engine. That's a good test to do. 
but um, we're going to continue with this one. All right, we've got Sass on. Got all that staging. Boom, release. Boom, release. Boom, a boom, boom. Here we go, Jebediah. So we've got a fair bit to go. Alright, well there we go. We're starting to hit wind resistance at halfway. So we could we could tro probably try and tweak that potentially. Uh, resistance has fallen away, which is good, so we'll boost again. Whoo! Look at that! We are going. Alright, so there's a lot of oomph. A lot of oomph in this system, Jesus Christ. Alright, we want to hold on to this rocket. While it, while it slows. All right, we're in the altitude range, but we're going to overshoot it. Yeah, look at that. We've already overshot it with the speed that we were going at. So, action's on. I think my, my first reaction is going to be, let's turn SAS off. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter when we're out here. My first reaction is going to be to, um... Reduce that booster. <gasps> oh, there is a heat shield on there from last time. Oh my god, because I just... I For a moment I thought I'd scratch built this thing. Um, I guess I don't have to stage them separately, but what can I say? Old habits and such. Oh, okay. So yeah, my, my first immediate takeaway is that we, we just had, had too much go. So I might just swap that booster for a hammer and see how that works. You know, I just use stock models without really trying to mess with what they do to sort of think of it as a zeroing exercise. I guess most people could understand that even if they haven't zeroed a gun or anything like that, you know, but it's like you fire all bit to the left, adjust it to the right, fire all bit to the right, adjust it to the left, you know, and eventually you'll be on. Um, so that's sort of what I'm doing with the booster. So what's happened over there? There's all this crap I think that I've just left lying around. Is there a way to get it back and make money? I think maybe, I don't know. No idea. So yeah, essentially the big booster was too big. All right, well, let's get a smaller booster. Funds recovered from parts. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Um, let's go again. Test series two, we'll go three. Right, pull that off. Put a, a hammer in because that's sort of the next most powerful thing. Is the coupler still there? Couple of couplers. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. And that's it. That's the only change I want to make for this moment. And we'll sort of we'll see what comes of that. So that should give us, you know, em empirical iterative evidence as to where we need to go. Like, is it not going to have enough? And we potentially have to go back to the booster and throttle it. Maybe. Don't know yet. We'll have to find out. All right, let's go. I need that contract up so I can see the info. Oh, well, same thing. We're just at the very last, like, fifth, we're getting up against that wind resistance. All 
are. Ooh, getting hot here, so we could potentially throttle this thing. Goodness me. Definitely want to throttle this thing. Alright, well we're going very fast. Let's see how quickly it slows. That might be enough to... Well, I mean, are we going to be able to cover that much distance? How much do we have to cover? 30,000? 20,000? We're going 1,000 a second. Okay. We might, we might actually get there. Oh, well, we're in the zone now, but we're way too fast. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. So, okay, and that doesn't count as flying when you're drifting through orbit. So I guess we can safely detach this, this thing now. Holy heck. All right, well, definitely... I mean, we're getting that resistance, so, like, if that's a concern, our lack of efficiency, it's not really. But we, we need to reduce the burn for sure, so what... Oh. So I'm actually... I'm gonna... I'm going to halve the fuel in that stage and and halve the thrust, right? We'll see what that does. Might even quarter the fuel. I'm not sure. The halving seems sensible. You know, if this is the sort of design that we're going to do, which is iterative, then that makes sense. That first stage is almost perfect, right? Like it burned the whole time with, with wind resistance at the end. So if we're going to halve the fuel in the second R10 hammer, or RT10 hammer, um, then there's a good chance that that first stage is... Well, actually, let's have a think about it, because we're going to have less weight. We're actually going to have less weight, which means it's probably going to thrust faster and harder as well. Interesting. Interesting, actually. That makes me wonder. Right, if it's lighter, it's just gonna go hammer and tongs in that first stage even more, which is gonna create a bigger problem. So yeah, okay, we're gonna make changes to the layout of both of them, I think. Because we can't take the back one off and the, and that one's close. I don't think switching that down to an RT5 is actually really gonna do us any, any help, so. What we'll do is, I'll stick with halving this across the board, right? But we should also bring this thing down as well. Now, I don't really want to limit the thrust. I like the idea of getting the most out of that thrust to, to get through that first bit of atmosphere, you know? Um, what I might actually do is take a quarter of the fuel out. So it's still going to go as hard, but it's just not going to burn as long but that's fine because as we've discussed sort of my stance on boosters these days and that's exactly what this is a booster is to get you to that wind resistance phase as as soon as possible asap right once you're at that point you're you're laughing i think after that you're sort of you're at like a maintain level if that makes sense so this thing just is a delivery system to get us to that thrust, all right? So it's obviously hitting that wind resistance, so it's doing fine. And I don't want to take longer to thrust if I can, if I can help it. Yeah. Yeah. That's my, that's my mentality and I'm sticking with it. So let's try this version. 2.7 thousand, okay. We're bleeding money a lot slower because we're, we're recovering uh, the module as well it seems it seems that we're not losing as much from recovery costs as i thought we might so we're doing okay all right turn on the sass and uh we'll give this another go oh well look it's hit that resistance so that's perfect we could potentially take a tiny bit of fuel out
Oh, at least this isn't burning up quite as badly, so that's nice. That's actually quite... that's quite good. What's going on there? So we could hypothetically give it more thrust. Oh, mm. That's actually kind of perfect. We'll see if that carries us to where we need to go. Definitely got the momentum. That speed's... what's it got to go? 230. Huh. Hard to say. 54,000. 700 meters per second. It's decaying about 50 meters per second each second. Ooh, look at this. We've got until 62 to slow down. We might, we might just make it. We've slipped into the zone now. We just need it to decelerate to 230 meters per second before 62,000 meters. I don't know if it's going to do it. Oh, so close. Ah, bugger, and we've crossed the altitude threshold. Um, okay, that's cool. So what we ultimately need to do is just have a shorter burn, I would say. Um we're so we're so close. Um I can ditch this. Um, was the first stage hitting resistance as well? It was. Yeah, so I might I might just snip a little burn on both stages. And then we'll be right as rain. But yeah, I suppose short of doing all the rocketry math, there's no real way to to detect all this better. Like, just keep iterating, I suppose. Oh, we might be able to squeeze in one last flight before we wrap up here. Which would be gold. All right. I mean, I get we are going as fast as we can on this, you know. I kind of wish we could get into the next flight sooner. You, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm not even sure. Like, am I playing this properly? Am I supposed to be iterating for one test contract? Am I supposed to have, like, a million different bloody things going on here? Like, maybe? But I wonder how... One of the ways I could probably shore it up is the direction we were sort of going. If I could create a, a, a vessel, right? If I could create a vehicle with a liquid engine, but it's recoverable. Do you, do you sort of know what I mean? Like if I could recover the entire thing and hypothetically carry it to that altitude under under power, that, that would be another option. Look, I'm just going to persevere with this sort of iterative testing, but having an actual delivery contract vehicle is probably going to be the smarter method in the long term because we're going to have to keep taking these contracts to make money. Um, Okay, cool. We're going to shave. I don't want to limit the thrust, right? We got there too soon, if anything. So I'm going to shave a bit off that. I'm going to shave a significant bit off that. But thrust limit, I don't know. We started to burn at the end of it. No, no, I'm pretty happy with that. So I guess let's call out the 4A because I'm just making some subtle adjustments. Let's go. We'll squeeze in a quick launch because I feel like we could, this might actually get the contract, which would be nice. All right, we'll lock that in. Turn on SAS.
All right, there you go. We're hitting resistance. That's good. So, could go less fuel, for sure, in the first stage. Yeah, right. So we'll see how we go here. Uh, I, I feel like we're not going to come close, actually. Oh, well, we'll just see. We'll see how this deceleration goes. Can we speed it up a little bit? I guess we can. All right. Well, we're in the speed zone. But we're going to be just short, I think. Come up on 100, and yeah, we haven't quite hit the altitude. See, right now, a liquid engine would be absolute godsend. Now, isn't that interesting? We're sort of... We were decelerating back. So you can you can you can actually get it on the way back as well, is the thing. Yeah. Turn off SAS. Hmm. No, look, I as much as I'm trying to do the cost effective zeroing sort of technique, I think over time. This is probably gonna cost this would probably cost more, to be honest. It's it's good, it's it's fun, but it's like it's gonna take me ten iterations or whatever to finally zero it for one test, and then what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna take a new contract that's gonna have slightly different altitude and um and speed, you know. It'll just be because I'm pretty sure they're all just procedural. Right? So I think the true answer is to create a truly recoverable vessel that um, is modular to a point so I could potentially add fuel as needed and reduce. Like, I guess the ideal world is we have this hypothetical rocket already built, right? And all I got to do is um, attach the part and launch it sort of thing. The part doesn't even have to function. My part doesn't even have to function. Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about like prograde thrust to slow my descent coming in. And I know that apparently you can get like little prograde controls if I level little Jebediah up, but I don't have that available. But it's pretty straightforward, especially if we're firing straight up and straight down. I could probably eyeball the prograde, you know what I mean? And, and thrust against it. So what do we do there? Especially, well, in this case, we don't have to fire the test rocket, right? We just have to transport it. So attach the rocket to my, like, attach the test part. Let's not even refer to it as a rocket. Attach that. We can make it empty as well for all that really matters. So it's non-significant. Maybe it'll mess with my, my center of gravity in that, but even if we empty it out, it probably won't. So we can potentially attach it to the back of this, this rocket of mine, right? And then we have probably a booster stage on it to get us up to where we want to go. Then we probably have a liquid engine. So it's going to be very much like our exit orbit vehicle that we've been building. Um, and then we have the throttle for that. Now, the one, the one sort of thing that I wonder about is on re-entry, how much control am, am I going to have over my sort of main ship system like I, if i've got enough fuel for that re-entry like i could just turn off the throttle when i hit the top and let it come back under power of gravity and just essentially well retrograde is what i was trying to say i suppose like f slow my descent yeah and potentially have little legs or something though we've only got those crappy little legs yeah look that's what's going to happen on the next episode guys i'm going to even though we've got hardly any money i'm going to potentially start building this sort of return vehicle 
Uh, just need to come up with a way to make it land properly. So we'll have to make those legs work, even though they're crappy little small legs. What we might do is, um, like, like fit the girders onto the base of the, the liquid fuel engine or something like that. You know what I mean? To, I don't know. I don't think there's a way to warp parts and make them larger or smaller. I don't know enough. But yeah, so yeah, that's that's where I'm going to go with it next time, team. It's been interesting doing the disposable rockets, but it's a bit of a trap because I can't zero it. And for a long-term investment, I want to make one vehicle that can do all of those contracts. And all I, all I really got to do is adjust the amount of fuel in it, basically. All right. Thanks again for joining me. Always appreciate the feedback. Uh, I might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.